But welcome everyone. I'm Jennifer Bevin Dangle. I'm the Executive Director of Common Cause Maryland. Thank you all for coming out on this blustery day to talk about an issue that Common Cause Maryland, the League of Women Voters, and many of our partners in the Tame the Gerrymander Coalition have been working on for several years now, which is how to fix our rigged and broken redistricting process here in Maryland. The winds of change are not just blowing across Lawyers Mall, but they're blowing across the state and the nation as well. As we stand here, we have our congressional delegation leading the charge to push for national reform so that as Maryland moves forward, we're not moving forward alone. And of course, we have the governor who spoke earlier this morning about his strong commitment to advancing his legislation <coughs> and many other senators and delegates who have bills in this year also geared at fixing our broken redistricting process and putting in a more fair, transparent, and open process for all Marylanders. We're going to talk about the, the governor's effort and the redistricting reform commission first, and I'll be introducing Walter Olson in one minute to, to speak to that. And then we will talk about the court cases, both here in Maryland and across the nation, that are putting a new light and a new focus on this energy behind reform. And then Nancy Soren with the League of Women Voters will close with the public push in Maryland and a little bit, and we will be hearing from delegates and senators on the bills as they're able to join us. Um, so let me turn over to Walter Olson. Wonderful. And I'll actually let you introduce yourself if you don't mind, as I am being all windblown and flustered. <laughs> yes. Well, that, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, my name is Walter Olson, and I was uh, one of the, and one of the two co-chairs of Governor Hogan's uh, Maryland uh, Redistricting Reform Commission. Uh, one year and four months ago to the day, we uh, put out our report following months of hearings around the state, um, uh, contact with experts, uh, and the uh, review of the literature on this. We had a commission of uh, 11 in which we had a strong consensus for reform. Um, uh, with very important input from legal women voters, uh, from Common Cause Maryland, from uh, other organizations that have been following this issue for many years. And our reforms, we think, would make Maryland, rather than the worst in the country, they would make Maryland the best state for redistricting in the country. Uh, they, uh, there are three parts. Uh, the first part, uh, which follows the best, in fact, all of them follow what we found to be the best rules in other states. Uh, we. The first one is principles for redistricting that include uh, congruence, contiguity, uh, conformance to local political boundaries like townships and counties. Uh, this is not complicated, but Maryland does not have this for uh, its congressional districts in particular. Uh, we would adopt a strong set of those rules. Secondly, uh, who gets to draw the lines? Uh, one of the great trends in recent years starting out west has been independent citizen commissions. Uh, rather than letting political insiders draw the lines, a uh, great breakthrough is to uh, find people whose self-interest is not at stake, people who do not have a built-in conflict of interest, uh, public-minded citizens. Uh, states like Arizona and California have shown the way, and we modeled uh, our proposal for a nine-member independent citizens commission closely on the successes that have been had in those western states. The third component is uh, the correct use of information and transparency. Um, uh, <clears throat> Jennifer mentioned transparency, and in addition to public hearings, uh, taking public comment, uh, data transparency turns out to be very important. <coughs> and one of the key ways in which states have made advances in, in inviting the public to participate in the process. Uh, in addition, a very powerful tool used in a number of states is to blind the commission from information about uh, who votes which way, uh, what the voting history is of a particular town, uh, what the party registration is, and also where incumbents live. Now, at this point, some of the people in the State House might be shivering even more than we are, because if you blind a commission as to where incumbents live, uh, you might find that uh, the districts are really not protective of incumbent interests. And yet, states like Iowa do it exactly that way. It works fairly. The legislators learn to live with that fairness uh, because it strengthens <coughs> the whole system to be more fair. Um, Maryland would wind up under our plan as being the only one of the 50 states in which elected officials have no influence, zero input, as to who sits on the commission to draw their lines. We're very proud of that. Uh, please join us in supporting the cause. 
of redistricting reform. Governor Hogan is leading the way, but it's a bipartisan cause. All are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Here, here. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Delegate Al Carr from District 18, a, a longtime champion of redistricting reform. Oh, who has laryngitis, but we want to thank him for his concern and for the fact that um, he, he does support good government, and this is one of, the, one of the ways that we can get there. So thank you so much for coming. And, and now, um, now we hear from Delegate Susan McComas from District 34B. Uh, we have been supporting her call for a study and for action on this issue um, for many, many years now. We're so glad to have her here to talk about her support for reform. I want to thank you all very much, and I actually prepared what I was going to say so because I don't want to freeze everybody out. Um, this is There's an old, very famous saying that says, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, and that was Lord Acton, even though Machiavelli gets credited with it. The power to select the voters by the elected is contrary to our United States Constitution and the Maryland Declaration of Rights. The power to govern comes from the people, not the politicians. We are a democracy, not an autocracy or an <coughs> oligarchy. For several sessions, I've sponsored a legislative task force bill to study redistricting process in Maryland, along with a number of my colleagues. The bill always had bipartisan support and was a gentle proposal. The task force would be staffed by the Department of Legislative Services and the State Board of Elections. This was done purposely because I thought a baby step might be the most successful way to get some small reform in the system. Boy, was I wrong. In 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015, this very modest task force bill always received a hearing in the House Rules and Executive Nominations Committee, but never a vote. Now my bill was not the only redistricting bill that did not receive a vote. Every other bill did not receive a vote. The Maryland legislature and its leadership did not want to evaluate, change, or improve the redistricting process. This is very unfortunate. In 2015, the governor appointed a very prestigious <coughs> and bipartisan and competent commission to study this issue. The commission made some important recommendations for reform of Maryland's redistricting process. Governor Hogan has implemented those recommendations into HB 685. I am a co-sponsor of the Governor Hogan's Bill of 685, which will be heard today in the House Rules Committee. Just about done. Um, HB 685 is a comprehensive solution to Maryland's convoluted, confusing, and crazy congressional and legislative districts. HB 685 creates a fair, transparent, nonpartisan, and representative redistricting pro process. HB 685 is desperately needed so that Maryland can escape that terrible honor of being the worst gerrymandered state in the nation. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. And we have one last delegate who will speak, and then we will transition into the court cases. Delegate Parrott from District 2A uh, will talk about his push for reform. Great. Thank you for being here today, Delegate Neil Parrott. I really appreciate all the work that Common Cause, the League of Women Voters, and the people of Maryland are doing to overturn the most gerrymandered district in the entire United States of America. What we saw, especially District 3, has just been ridiculed. It's been made fun of on Comedy Central, it's been made fun of all across the nation and for good reason. It's the most, it's the least compact district in the entire nation. And I'm very thankful we have Vin Shapiro behind me um, who brought that lawsuit, really did a lot of his own homework. He's an engineer and um, really got out in front of this issue and helped to bring it. And that lawsuit is continuing forward and we're going to see something later this fall. I really appreciated our governor, Governor Hogan, for having the foresight and putting forth a task force with excellent members across the board trying to study this issue and coming up with concrete decisions and concrete recommendations that we can make the, vote, the redistricting process in Maryland more fair for all Marylanders. It's time that we don't allow the politicians to pick their own politicians but allow the people to pick the politicians by having fair districts that we can count on. And again, I want to thank everyone for all the efforts that have gone on over the many years, including the referendum effort to get this on the ballot so that people could choose. Even though the question wasn't fair, people did work very, very hard to overturn this current map. Thank you. Thank you. 
And in our, our press packet, which Raquel has copies of, um, we do have all the bills listed with bill numbers and sponsors and co-sponsors. We also have information on the back of that on some of the court cases from out of state. But one of the most exciting piece of litigation moving right now is the state effort to take our partisan gerrymandering to the court. And here to speak to that today is Steve Shapiro, the man who initiated this case and was so passionate about the work he did that he changed his career and is actually currently in law school. Um, gerrymandering can change lives. But let's hear, let's hear from Steve. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Jennifer. And I certainly appreciate everything that uh, Common Cause and the League and the other uh, supporters have been doing. Uh, certainly also appreciate uh, the efforts of the legislators on both sides of the aisle who are involved with the, uh, the issue uh, with the General Assembly this year. It's been uh, hard to believe almost uh, three and a half years since I, with uh, two others, uh, filed suit against the, uh, the state of Maryland uh, to try to, uh, to get this overturned. And the case uh, you know, went to the Supreme Court a little over a year ago and is back in uh, U.S. District Court. Uh, during the fall, the uh, focus of the court narrowed a bit. The court is now looking almost exclusively at the Western Maryland 6th District and uh, primarily the impact on Republican voters uh, insofar as uh, the impact to their First Amendment rights as far as was it legal for the state to target Republicans just because of their political association. Uh, at the point that the court narrowed its focus, uh, I, it was felt best for me to leave the case since I live in the 8th district rather than in the 6th district. I tried to get uh, the spring, the winter tried to get the court to rebroaden its focus back to some of the other gerrymandered districts, particularly the 8th district that I live in. Uh, the court uh, denied that a few weeks ago. Uh, but hopefully when the court ultimately will find for uh, the remaining plaintiffs and order a remedy, hopefully the court will order a remedy that will be applicable to the rest of the state. Uh, the case as it is narrowed is still moving along quite nicely. Uh, the uh, attorneys were scheduled to have deposed uh, Speaker Bush and President Miller along with uh, former Governor O'Malley uh, this week and the, the case is uh, proceeding to get ready uh, for trial sometime uh, during, the, uh, during the coming months. So I'm optimistic that, uh, that they will be successful in the district court, and then the, uh, the big question will be what the Supreme Court is going to do with it. Uh, in the past, the, uh, the Supreme Court uh, has generally been very reluctant to get into the whole field of partisan gerrymandering out of concerns as to how the courts will manage it and how the courts will be able to order effective solutions without the court having to itself redesign the districts for every state. But I'm, I'm very confident that uh, if the courts have a mind to do so, the discernible harm to the Constitution or under the Constitution is strong enough that uh, there's a definite case for the courts to go forward. I'm particularly concerned that if the courts do not move forward, the fact that our national politics have become so increasingly partisan is weighing against this as the national parties are gearing up for the 2020 elections. Both national parties realize that under the current system, what they need to do is to control the state houses, control state legislators, and try to determine the makeup of the U.S. House of Representatives through control of the state governments. And one better believe that's going to be a huge issue here in the, uh, in the 18 election in, in America. So I certainly appreciate what everybody is doing. And hopefully, if everyone sticks together and makes this an issue, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to bring about a better result. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. I really appreciate all of your efforts on behalf of all Marylanders and uh, citizens all over the country. I'm Nancy Soaring with the League of Women Voters of Maryland, and I'm going to wrap up this, this event. Thank you all so much for coming. The momentum is truly building for redistricting reform. What we have over here are some recent headlines from various papers from around the state showing that things are happening and that the press is paying attention. What we have over here is a listing uh, by all the Senate districts in the state of Maryland 
of the number of activists who have either come to one of our events, we've been, the League of Women Voters and other groups have been speaking all over the state about redistricting form, or they have actually taken action by responding to an action alert that was sent out by Common Cause. So over 3,000 people have taken um, action on redistricting reform. 79% of Marylanders in recent polls have said they're in favor of redistricting form. There is no reason to keep stalling. Uh, our state needs this and our country needs this. And thank you all for coming and being supportive. Oh, and you know who just arrived? There's co-chairs of the Redistricting Reform Commission that was uh, appointed by the governor. And this is the other co-chair. And you're going to introduce yourself. Yes. <laughs> Hi, uh, Alex Williams, retired judge, and I certainly want to support uh, the, the efforts here to just make this thing uh, work here in Maryland. This is a national problem. Most of the states are working with it right now, and in Maryland, uh, we just have to set the trend and, and set the model and the standard uh, for excellence. And we ought not hide between hide behind uh, Congress or what they're going to do or not do. Congress is not functional right now. I just think that Maryland needs to take the steps to uh, have this independent commission come in place. And at the same time, all of us who believe in the citizens believe that the citizens will ultimately be able to make selections if the lines are properly drawn, regardless of partisan politics. I, I just have confidence in our citizens that they'll be able to do that. Thank you.